Well, hello, and uh, this is Doug in my Mavic Air 2S. Uh, today, to talk about the Chino Creek Golf Course, uh, one of the two courses at the El Prado Golf Complex in uh, Chino, California. Um, what makes Chino Creek uh, special and unique? Well, the name uh, says it all, right? There's a creek uh, running down the course, uh, through the course. Actually, it's, uh, it's only in the back nine. The front nine doesn't have the, uh, the creek itself. It does have a, a little pond and some, uh, some other waste areas, but the creek only shows up in the back. Um, but when it does show up, it, it makes a difference. Uh, it definitely uh, gets in the way and something to know about. The next thing are the uh, grass mounds. Um, uh, they've placed grass mounds in the fairways and up near the greens. Um, and they act, especially the ones in the fairways, uh, to shape the course uh, and also uh, to replace what might have been bunkers. In other words, uh, you've had the big grass mound on the left side, and if you go in, it's almost as penal as a, as a fairway bunker. So uh, that, that definitely has an impact. Up by the greens, it stops balls uh, from rolling up onto the green. If you hit a three wood or a low shot, it's gonna roll up. Um, it forces you to play to one side or the other, depending where this little mound might be, or big mound actually. Um, they're not very thick up there like in the fairways, so if you get in one, it's not quite so penal, but it does stop the ball from getting to where you want it to go. So that's the second thing that's, that's really significant. Um, another thing that's, that seems strange is, are the elevation changes. Uh, Chino Creek is very walkable. In fact, I would recommend to walk it. It's a, it's a pleasant uh, little walk as you play along. Um, but there are elevation changes uh, that are just in the right spots to make holes uh, a little bit longer than they are on the card. Um, and uh, just just something you have to you know pay attention to if you want to score well because you're going to be half club short or a club short on a few occasions if you don't really notice that you're, you're going uphill or, or whatever the case may be. Um, another thing they have there are split greens. By that I mean most of the greens slope uh, back to front, which is very typical. Um, but many of the greens have a, a secondary slope. Um, usually in the back side of the green or up on the top side of the green uh, that can be severely, fairly severe, either going left or right. And uh, so, so white pins and red pins aren't as affected by these slopes, these secondary slopes, but oftentimes a blue pin is very tricky and something you have to be aware of. Um, and a few of the greens are sloped uh, quite steeply from back to front, um, meaning that uh, the, the, there might not be a right or left uh, slope in the back, but if you're above the, the hole, um, you're going to have a, a tough putt coming downhill. So those are a couple of things to look out for. And they're not very big greens. So the green complexes here are, are interesting. Nothing too tricky, fancy in terms of potato chips or lots of curves and breaks. Just these one, these uh, little breaks uh, at the top of the greens that are fairly severe that uh, are sometimes hard to see. And the next thing is the length. Uh, at 6,300 yards from the whites, it's, it's not terribly long, but longer than most of the courses, public courses around here, um, which would range more than 6,000 uh, or 6,100 yards. So you've got a couple extra hundred yards plus some of these elevation changes. Um, you know, make it make it something you have to pay attention to and, and be aware of. Um, uh, it, it's in a great condition right now. It, it's tough. Uh, both uh, Butterfield and uh, Juno Creek are in a floodplain. And uh, <clears throat> I did a review of Butterfield recently, and, and the video looked pretty tough because it had been after a lot of storms and, and the rain that we've had around here. Um, but it's in much better shape now, and uh, Chino Creek is in, is in great shape right now as well. So uh, you should get out there and give them a shot. And uh, without further ado, let's get into the holes and uh, see what it looks like. Number one is an average length uh, par four, but it's the tightest driving hole on the course. You don't want to go right, the trees are definitely in play. You don't want to go left, you've got a bunch of trees over there. Uh, long hitters can actually drive it through this dog leg. It's a very sharp dog leg, actually. So uh, basically, if you, if you can keep it in the middle here, you're going to be uh, fine for your, for your second shot. Um, our first grass mound shows up here on the right. And in this case, this guy's chip shot. The mound did its job and kept the ball from going on to the green, just like it's designed. Okay, number two, uh, short par four. Uh, you're teeing off from a mound going down into a valley. You just want to clear this little uh, rear, the gully, I guess you'd call it here. Clear that, and then you've got a, uh, a shot, but it's all uphill, so definitely, that's a, definitely a one-club 
extra for sure. And there's a grass mount in the front of this screen as well, right in there. And it's a short green, uh, but very wide. Hard to hit, to hit in regulation because of its shape and size. Number three is a fairly long par four. Um, straight away off the uh, the tee here. Our first grassy mound comes into play on the fairway on the left. Doesn't look too prominent here, but when you're playing it, it definitely <laughs> shows up, that's for sure. Uh, otherwise, you're just banging it down this hole. Uh, the fairway, or the bunkers, I should say, at the green come into play somewhat, especially the one on the right. Otherwise, uh, it's a fairly basic hole, and what you see is what you get. Number four, a average length uh, par three. Biggest thing here, you can see it right in front of you there, is that bunker. It definitely uh, catches a lot of balls. They come up just a little short. There is a little bit of an elevation change here. So you're actually hitting slightly uphill. Not Maybe not even half a club, a quarter of a club, but it's something to be aware of. Number five, uh, decently long par five, that's for sure. And there is a little uphill at the end that makes it just a tad longer. So uh, that's uh, making it interesting. There's a grass mound over here, definitely on play off the tee. Uh, you want to avoid that if you can. Keep it a little right. Your second shot is going to go uh, right down the middle here. And st this is where it starts going uphill. So be aware that it's, it's a good half a club extra that you've got to be considering when you're hitting your, your third shot onto this green, or hopefully onto this green. Uh, green is a little trickier than some. It's got a fairly complex uh, series of breaks here. Number six is a uh, short par four, especially given the, uh, the downhill at the end. It's a cute little hole, very tight off the tee. Got a sort of a grass mound on the right there, a little grass mound on the left, really shaping this hole. Then uh, you're good, definitely going downhill for sure. You want to take uh, probably one club less, I would say. Um, fairly steeply sloped from the back to the front. Okay, number seven, uh, an average length par three. Uh, basically what you see is what you get again here. Uh, obviously, the pond. Hey, hit it over the pond. Make sure you, you have enough club. Uh, you're not really hitting uphill, but uh, anyway, just, just make sure you get enough club here. The slope here is a uh, traditional uh, back to front, uh, going down to the right. And then over on the left is that uh, little split green effect. Okay, number eight, grass mound on the right. Uh, be aware of that. Uh, that's a pretty thick grass there, you see, too. It's very, very heavy. Um, yeah. It's also got a, a lot of slope to this this hole. It's, it's very gradual, and it's hard to see it uh, if you don't pay attention, but it's, it's all uphill. It's definitely, uh, on your second shot, I would say another uh, full club. This screen is pretty tricky uh, to putt. It slopes very severely back to front, so you don't want to be back if it's a red pin, and there's a lot of break to the left up there. Okay, number nine is a straightaway par five. Uh, off the tee, you got a little grass mound here on the right-hand side, which uh, gets in the way, and it's just a tiny bit, but uh, stay on the left, favor the left if you can. As you go up the fairway, you want to keep it left because there's a bunch of trees over here on the right that get in the way on your, uh, in your third shot approach to the green. So favor the right side, or the left side, I'm sorry. And then when you get up here, there's a big, big grass mound on the right here. It's just really big, and anything hitting that will stop. It will not make the green at all, so uh, be aware of that. Number 10, a lot going on here, uh, a loft lot. It's the first introduction to the creek down there. Um, a good drive onto the right is not a good drive. Don't go right, go left. Those trees up there will be blocked out if you uh, go on the right side. So stay left if you can. A bad tee shot will put the uh, uh, creek in play. If it does, you may have to consider laying up into this area here. It's about 100 and 110 from the green from there. So Consider laying up if you don't think you can clear that. And then we have two grass mounds on the left. So a lot going on here on, uh, on number 10. Okay, 11. You want to get a par on this one. It's not too long a hole. Um, it's a dogleg right. You've got water on the right, and it slopes to the, to the right quite a bit. So try to stay left of here if you can. Right about where these go, are actually in good position here. 150 out, uh, maybe, maybe less if you can get a good drive. And then... Uh, Getting it down to the screen here, not too, too complex or tricky. The blue pin, however, is a little dicey because there's a uh, slope off to the right over there for putting. Number 12, a relatively long par four. Grass mounds on the right and on the left. 
over there. They come into play. These guys have nice drives that they got down there. Uh, that palm tree over on the left can come into play just a little bit too if you go too far left. So otherwise, it's it's pretty basic. Just uh, get it down here. It's one of the bigger green complexes on the course, uh, sloping mostly from uh, back to front. Number 13, uh, dog leg left, long par 5. Uh, a short drive will not even make the fairway. It's it's really, it's a long drive to, to get it down into this area here. That, that's for sure. And here you want to, uh, is where you break off to the left here. Um, it's a big grass mound on the left-hand side down there. Try to avoid that if you can. And uh, again, a fairly good-sized green. Um, a lot of break from back to front. Number 14, average length, uh, par 4. Those two bunkers are definitely in play. Um, and that's really the only challenge here. Well, you got to get it on the green, of course. But the the sloping here is uh, back to front as normal. Not too severe, not too tricky, anything like that. But those two bunkers definitely come into play, especially the one on the front right. Okay, 15 is a uh, pretty long par 4, that's for sure. And there's a lot going on here. Uh, the creek is definitely a factor as you get down to there. Uh, first thing you notice here, a grass mound on the left-hand side over here. There's uh, another grass mound on the right-hand side. And here's the trick here. You really should lay up here. I hate, hate to say it, but uh, this is really something you should consider strongly, laying up in the front of the creek, because if you go over the creek, uh, if you happen to make it, you're just in a, on a slope, and it's not a bad place to be in anyway. So I would lay up here and uh, try to get your next shot on the green and get a one putt par if you can. It's uh, it's not too difficult to putting putting green. Well, this par three is protected by that huge bunker in the front. It uh, gobbles up balls very easily. That's for sure. Um, the green is uh, wider than it is depth, uh, deep, so it's a little tricky to get the right club to make sure you pass over the bunker, but don't go too long, so be careful here. Okay, 17 is a very short par 5. Um, the problem is, if you get a bad drive, the creek is now in play again. But a good drive gets you right down in here, in which case the creek is not an issue. But a bad drive uh, puts that creek in play, so try to get it down there if you can. Second shot... Uh, Gets over the creek easily, lands you down in here 120, 110, 90 yards, something like that. So you have a wedge uh, or a short iron into this green. Those two bunkers really shouldn't come into play. Uh, you should be landing a green or a, a wedge shot right in the middle of the green somewhere and then make your uh, two putt for par. Okay, 18 is our final shot at the creek. Uh, shouldn't be an issue. It's too close to the tee boxes to really be a factor. However, <laughs> and use your landing area here. However, after that, you've got uphill, 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 uphill. Uh, it's a par 4. It's a long par 4. I have never been on the screen in regulation, and I don't know anyone that has been on the, the screen in regulation. I'm sure someone has, but no one I know of. Just a tough one. It really is. And then when you get up there, it slopes uh, pretty steeply from back to front, making it a tough finishing hole. Well, I hope you enjoyed our visit of Chino Creek today. Uh, it's a fun course to play, nice one to walk. Uh, get out here and, and give it a shot. Uh, I think you'll have a good time.